Hello, and welcome to another episode of Open for Business, where we meet and talk with business owners, business executives, pros, specialists about what they do, how they do it, and why you might want to be talking to them about what you do. Uh, today, we have Freddie Rapina from Opta Financial in the house. Hello. And uh, Freddie and I have, have a, a background in common, which really makes this an, an interesting set of exchanges because um, I spent 10 years at a, uh, a major Wall Street firm. I went to Wharton Business School. And so Freddie at Opta Financial represents sort of um, the new age, a new way <laughs> of doing classic investment for people like you who are uh, maybe hoping to retire one day. Gee, wouldn't that be neat? Or um, live the lifestyle that you want now. And, and that's an interesting option. <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna begin with the idea that, um, you know, back when I was, back in the old days, uh, in, you know, when I was doing the the, the investment consultation with people, we would always start with the, with the basic story that um, if you were 20 years old and you put $2,000 in an IRA and just put it in for 10 years and then left it alone with S&P averages at 65, you'd have a million dollars. Whereas if you started 10 years later and put 2,000 in, you'd actually have less. All that, you know, so it's like the, the purpose is to start now, start early, start saving, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, what's wrong with that? Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I want to be very clear. Yeah, because I mean, the, the math is irrefutable. Right, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. The, yeah. if you do those things, then, you know, theoretically your account's going to grow. Uh, I believe the problem is, is that it, it may not create the goal that you want, right? Um, what is the goal of that money? Is the goal to, to you save it at 20 and not use it until you're at least 59 and a half and yeah, 65 you know, was the number that, yes. that they used. So, right. yeah. So, so you'd have to leave it alone for, you know, 45 years, practically, mm -hmm. you know, your first deposit. And is, are you going to be dependent on that money for your retirement or are you going to be building wealth? Are you saving or are you building wealth? It, well, so there, there is a difference. Well, you know, I mean, having your money work for you mm -hmm. is what people traditionally think of as building wealth. And so that that eight percent average return compounding, mm -hmm. okay, which means it doubles every nine years. That's the rule of seventy two. Right. Um, but it, that's how you build wealth. Okay, you just you let it compound. Is that oh. there are better ways now? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. It's not better ways now. The ways have always been the same. It's what's been forced on people to believe that saving and having this compound interest is what is going to bring them to the promised land. And, and I'm saying that's that's not the whole story. It's part of the story for sure, right? You want compound interest. You want the account to grow over time. You're, you're paying my firm to have these accounts grow over time, right? <laughs> yeah, but, leave, just leave the money there. <laughs> let it sit, let it ride, okay? Because we're, we're cleaning house on it, mm -hmm. okay? And I think, you know, when you look at this, you're, you're looking at, Traditional vehicles like, you know, IRAs, 401ks, um, Section 125 cafeteria plan, but whatever it is you've got, mm -hmm. okay, that, that that is one of these, I don't really want to call it a forced savings account, but that's kind of what they are. They come out of your paycheck, you know, they, 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 they run aside. contribution accounts. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if, if you've got these things and, but I mean, what, and that's maxing you out. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, but. One of the things I always ran into was, yeah, that that twenty thousand dollars that you put in, you know, finally at age thirty, it just became the down payment on your house. Okay, it didn't stay until you were sixty-five. Right, but we're talking yeah. we're, we're talking about saving instead of building wealth. All right, okay. Anthony, I want you to go down to the boat show here in Tampa and walk up to somebody with a twenty-five million dollar boat and ask him, "Hey, man, how did you? How are you able to afford this twenty-five million dollar boat? This is awesome." He's not going to respond likely with, oh, I maxed out my 401k at 22 years old and uh, <laughs> say diligently got an 8% compound return, you know, on these accounts. And that's how I was able to afford this $25 million boat, right? That's probably not going to be the answer. I mean, technically, since back then, the max you could put in was 2000 in your IRA. So the max <laughs> you could get out would be $1 million, Right. So you'd get 125th of that boat. So, yeah. it, so we can, it, the reason why you laughed yeah, right. Is because we know that there's something else, 
right? That's not just the, the only way to build wealth. Now, the saving in a retirement plan, is, you know, like it's a fine contribution, is, is great. You know, people should, a lot of people should do that, right? right? But they, in my opinion, we need to start changing our mindsets of what actually creates, builds wealth, all right? Wealth, not just saving money. Like, think of it like you're, you're, you're uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a hunter-gatherer, right? You're getting mm -hmm. all the, gathering all the food, you're a forager, you're saving it uh, for, uh, for winter, and, uh, would, and that's great. You're going to have to do that every single time. But wouldn't it be better to start a farm and have the food grow kind of on its own and then use it? It's so it's, you, it, that, to me, that, the person's wealthy because they are able to now get something recurring Right, they're going to have that income in this analogy recurring, not just saving money. So, okay, so a, a, a lot of what you see in the investment world is about appreciating assets. Okay, right. my, you, you know, I, I, the old rule used to be always, you know, buy IBM whenever it's in the double digits. Okay, okay. that was that was the rule twenty five years ago. Okay, if if it was in double digits, you bought IBM mm -hmm. because it would always get up to the point where it would be at $200 a share and they'd split and it would just drop down under so you'd buy it as soon as it was in double digits. Okay. And then it would just grow up and split again. And it went that way for like 25 years. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculously predictable. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, and th th those are unrealized gains. Right. Okay, you're just like hoping that your assets appreciate. It's like having you yeah. know, th the value of your house. Right, hope it goes up. Okay, yeah, and, and there it is. But but I went to the store and I, I, I brought a board from my house and they wouldn't yeah, take they it wouldn't for take groceries. It, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, but, but don't you understand? <laughs> this is from a half million dollar house, I uh -huh. swear. Zillow just told me so. Uh, you know? Right. So. so those appreciating assets still don't create income. And I think that is the biggest difference between what you know, I call the checkers and the chess play, right? It's like who is actually creating income for themselves, right? So like when you invest in a I don't know, whatever, pick your thing, right? You invest in a mutual fund, okay, right? Who are you creating income for? Well, I mean, you're hoping you're creating future income for yourself, right? But, but at that moment, um, the, the, the investment company, the investment company, right? Okay, so yeah, you, you because income for the investment company. When you put money in a bank, who did you create income for? The bank. The bank. If you, you know, and yeah. so like when well, you, unless someone went to the bank and borrowed your money. And went and did something really smart with it. That was me. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and what the strategies that we, that we teach, all right? And so building wealth, you know, the biggest differentiator, in my opinion, is how are you going to leverage debt? All right. How are you going to borrow money well? All right. And being able to get away from that just saving mindset and get into the wealth building mindset. Okay, so instead of seeing the the IRA, the four hundred one k, as the as the uh, desired outcome, you'd use it more like a tool along the way. Is, oh, is yeah. that a way to understand it? Yeah, yeah. I think about it as it's almost like a, a leverage. It's 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 collateral on the uh, on on the debt, not just the IRA or whatever, like all your assets. Right, everything you're saving, okay, and this is not for everyone, right? Some people just need right. to save money, right? Yeah, and save money, yeah. save diligently, hope for a really great return, and you have a small, you know, drip in retirement yeah. so you don't run out of money. I a mean, lot of if, people need to do if that. If you have a nice, if you're one of the like six people left in the world who still have a nice pension plan or something, you know, that, that they can rely on for a portion of, you know, for, for a substantial part of their income. That's dynamite, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're sitting around hoping that Social Security is going to carry you, and by the way, we all just got our Social Security notices, and I got to look at mine, and I went, <laughs> I just <laughs> laughed, okay? I mean, yeah, 40 years of paying in, and that's what you give me. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. It's really about wealth creation, and people need to get around that mindset, and it's hard. Well, if you're in the saver mindset, it's really difficult. Well, then I'm going to stop you and say, what do you mean by wealth? What yeah. does wealth, when you talk about wealth creation, for a lot of people, that just means I got the asset in the bank and I can go draw on it if I, I can pay the 10% penalty on my IRA if I need to, but I can still afford to replace the air conditioner, whatever it is. 
That's wealth. Is that wealth? I, I, I see that as just savings. All right. Well, wealth is being able to have money coming in while you're sleeping, while you're brushing your teeth, and money's just hitting your bank, hitting your accounts, right? Coming, and it's coming from somewhere else, right? It's not coming from your blood your, and your sweat. It's coming from other sources. So it's, it's not just like, hey, I'm going to you know, have a good job and I'm going to save a whole bunch of money in these retirement accounts and everything's going to be great. Remember, we're talking about you know, building wealth, not saving money. It's there. We have to make a distinction there um, and to know who you are. But from what I'm gathering, the, the saving money is still a very crucial element. Oh, of this. Yes. yes. It's not just, you know, I, I get paid in my sleep. I mean, you see those ads on, on right, right. YouTube no, no, and no, everywhere no, no, else, no, no. <laughs> yeah. you know, a, a, a million times a day. Earn yeah. money while you sleep. Yeah. OK, I mean, God, 10 years ago, they were just ridiculous. Um, but that kind of uh, you know, hands off earning passive income, passive income. Um, or recurring but, income, which is a little different. Okay, but so I guess I, I, I look at that and I'm like, how how do you get from A to B? But I guess that's your job, right? That, that's to yes, move that, people that, from A to B. Right. We love working with people that want to move from A to B. Okay. That now you might have to start with what I call checkers, right? You have to start with the savings and getting this all set up, right? Where you 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 have a good foothold. Everything's right. good. But then we have to draw that bridge. We have to make a bridge and we have to get it over the chest. And chess is where you're you're really using good leverage. You're you're buying cash, uh, ca uh, income producing assets. You're you're using your assets, as, you know, basically leverage um, and you're building income for yourself income. So you can do, have the life you want to live now. It pains me when people just think about retirement. It's almost like thinking about like, oh, I'm finally going to graduate high school or something like it's a, there's I'm going to have all these years where it's going to be hard. So one day it's all going to be great. And now you're 65. Right. Or or even further than that. I, I, I want to, you know, I love working with like, I you know, a 30 something year old, 40 something year old, heck, even a 20 something year old is like, that sounds awful. And I want to live the life I want to live now. How are we going to be able to do you know, this? I'm 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 going to you know, borrow into an anecdote here. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client, we worked towards his retirement. Uh, he and his wife, they were just the most lovely couple. He hit 65 and they were just, he was finally retiring from, I can't remember where it was, but it had been your typical 45 hour a week, you know, mm -hmm. away from home all the time, yada, yada. And um, he retired and the week after he retired, finally, he went out and mowed his own lawn and dropped dead of a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, you never know. He was retired for one week. He worked 45 years so he could retire for one week. Now, he worked for 45 years. And you never know when your number is going to get called, by the way. But he, Of course. Uh, but he worked for 45 years. Did he enjoy the 45 years? Was he, yeah. was he able to do the things he wanted to do with his family during those 45 years? Was he working at a job that he didn't care, that he didn't mind getting up and I will to work say for this. Or have when he retired, he didn't go back to the work, mm -hmm. which probably means it wasn't his first choice. Right. So At the very least, it wasn't something he loved so much that he couldn't stop doing it. I see doctors will do that. Mm -hmm. They love helping people. They don't stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And God knows they'll have enough money in the bank. Okay, but they just they won't stop working. It's being having the choice. Yes, right. It's yes. The, the, it's I think it's all about the freedom. Yep. What, the, what money will create is a lot of freedom, and it will amplify who you are. So if you're, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a jerk, you'll be a bigger jerk with money. If you're super nice, you're going to be hey, super. That's the truth. You're, you're going to yes, be a yes, lot yes. nicer with money. It is money's it, not going to change. It is you. just a magnifying glass. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. all it is. It's, just it, gonna it's not a colored lens. No, it's a magnifying it's glass. It's going to amplify who you yep. are. But if you have the freedom to be able to change careers change you know what you're doing when you get up in the morning then you, you have some trying to have female some yeah. freedom some free, freedom rather you have uh, uh the world opens up right so if you have um you have those choices mm -hmm. and now that doesn't mean you need to have like 50 million dollars to have those choices right so it'd be really nice but if you have those choices with you know a smaller amount of money that's you still you're still free well, and, and, and that's exactly right, because, you know, you, 
you need enough in if, if you're producing income mm -hmm. then you aren't looking at that nest egg value what matters to you is how much you're getting paid this month i mean that's the reason you go to work that's right is so that you know how much you're so you can pay your bills you can pay the mortgage you can you know keep the lights on so on and so forth but if you have this opportunity to replace that with a passive income right then what you're looking at is the chance to not not worry about the the asset value because honestly it's it it's i don't want to say meaningless mm -hmm. but it's 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 silliness right and people are so because worried about it you right look now. at you know, the fact is we have so many more millionaires today mm -hmm. than we did 10 years ago oh my god it's great well that's inflation that's house values going through the roof. Well, that's what makes you a millionaire. But does it increase your income? Can people are more people have able to do the things they want to do, right? All right. So I, yeah. I, that is again like going back mm -hmm. to that. That's, that is the freedom that that building wealth can create. Right. Right. Being able to do the things, being able to take your kids on vacations to where you want to go. Yep. All that. And hey, I don't like this profession anymore. I don't like this job anymore. Uh, I'm going to change it. And you can do that. You don't feel like you're you're stuck in this rut where you have to exactly. You know, work I can at, afford to go job hunting for three months, right? Because you okay, have because I a, have other income, income yes. coming in. Right. I'm okay. And honestly, we've been moving away from the mono source income model mm -hmm. for about twenty years. Um, the the lockdowns and everything just turned it over on its head, which is why so many people. That, that, that's why seven million working age men have not gone back to work well okay because they don't need the job they're doing something mm -hmm. that's generating income right without going and punching a time clock well whatever they're doing as long as they're happy that's number one the goal yes. is to be happy right well yes. you, know, you can build all the wealth in the world if you're not happy it yep. doesn't work out for you um if you are uh you know having that income where you can now change your lifestyle or improve your lifestyle mm -hmm. then then you, you're probably doing something right, but you have to build the actual wealth. You have to build the income first, right? but unless you're just going to be a saver, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, but just don't expect to be able to. Don't expect to be able to afford the things that people that are implementing better wealth building strategies are able to afford. Don't don't complain about the one percent getting richer. You're not playing the same game. You're you're playing checkers. They're playing chess. They're exactly. doing different things. So, so the most you're ever going to be able to do is, you know, move one square, whereas they've got pieces that can move diagonally all the way across the board. Well, you're, yes, they have, they have the assets, they have the income to be able to do it. Now, you're creating that income for you, for them. You're creating that income every day somehow. You're, yeah. you, you're, you're investing in the mutual your fund company. Your savings, your stock investment portfolio, okay, is going into their wealth building strategy yep okay you're funding it for them instead funded. of you right now Bottom you might ha it could be a mutually beneficial relationship though when you save money in you know these portfolios and all yeah. that it's it, it it's great because now you have an asset right? right now you have an asset you have an asset that you can but the thing is people have these assets they're not leveraging them right that, that and that's where they're 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 focusing on the asset value mm -hmm. instead of what you can do with that value right so the, it's the, it's just a tool and again where if you are playing chess you are going to at some point have to accept that your that debt's going to be your best friend instead of your worst enemy right yeah so and it's it's just that kind of relationship with it if you can if you can make money you know, with debt you're 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 in the right spot you're, I'm going to actually push your analogy a little further mm -hmm. here. When you're playing checkers, every piece on the board is the same value. When you're yeah, playing chess, you, you can sacrifice every pawn. <laughs> Doesn't matter as long as you take the other guy's king. Yeah, it's just a, it's that's a, what matters. It's more of a strategic yes. game than checkers. Exactly, right? exactly. So it, a lot more goes into it. Yep. But I, and I want my goal is to make the distinction. All right, and, and if people want to learn. Mm -hmm. They can learn if they want to continue what they're doing with checkers. That is fine. I'm not right. saying don't. I'm not. If you're a big saver, you're maxing out all your retirement plans, and you know you're hoping for these great rate of returns, and you're going to draw income from those uh, income from those plans at a future date, and that is going to fund your lifestyle, and you're going to be super happy. Good. All right. 
I would be realistic about what those accounts can actually produce so you don't run the well dry. But right. if you're interested in building wealth at some, you know, at some point, we have to talk about different strategies. Not and, you, you know, well, and so now let me, you've already touched on this, mm -hmm. and I want to bring it back around again. Because a lot of people think that in order to get here, they got to start with a million dollars. They got to start with half a million dollars. They have to, you, you know, before they can even, you know, come see you to begin talking about it. Yeah. No. Uh, and that's not the case. No, well, you don't have a minimum as far as money uh, goes with our firm. We do have a, a mindset minimum. Like we want people that want to improve their lifestyles. And, and they're also not, we want people to have the right expectations, right? It's not like, uh, I'm going to invest X amount of dollars for you and I want to see it grow to like, you know, why within three months or whatever, the, these unrealistic expectations. I, w I want the dot com returns, like just, okay, without <laughs> the bubble burst. <laughs> yes. because, I mean, like if I could spin straw into gold, I would just do that all day long, right? No. And so, yeah. and obviously, but then us financial advisors, it. we can't actually, we, we, you know, we're not, no. we're not doing that, right? No. But it's more about a guide. It's more about understanding the rules, right? The right. rules of the game and play, okay, how are we going to build wealth? Mm -hmm. All right, so that those are the type the, the the people we like working with is people with the mindset, and at some point we got to talk about if we're going to go play chess, we got to talk about how we're going to leverage the assets. Are we going to buy real estate? Are we going to buy businesses? Mm -hmm. Are we going to like how are we going to build this passive income, right, or recurring yep. income? Um, it's yeah, it, that because if if you don't, you're just gonna you're just a saver, and um, and it, and, and the may thing or may is, not work out. Yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of people who are, you know, doing things that appear to be passive income, but they're really not. There's a lot of work involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like my, my neighbors used to, they, they went out and leveraged and, and bought a laundromat, or mm -hmm. two laundromats. And they're like, wow, look at all this income coming in. Oh, my God. Well, that's Machine not. breaks, you know, you got a flood, <laughs> you got this. It was not passive. There right. was a lot of work involved in owning the laundromats. Well, yeah, well, that's um, business income, so it's going to be a little yeah. bit. I thought passive income would probably come from real estate. Right? Okay. Or re rental income from real estate. Okay. So that was, that's passive income. Which could be offset by a passive loss, which is going to be depreciation on the real estate. So, and those things can kind of offset. So it re there's a ton of different sh strategies but you got to pick with the one that's going to be the best for you and your risk tolerance, your time horizon. And, and your time horizon. Yes. Um, so really, what you're looking at is just about, just about anybody who's serious about becoming wealthy mm -hmm. by building wealth. Right. Not by, you know, playing the $1.3 billion mega bucks. This is that what it's up to now? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. It's crazy. Um, and, and then like after taxes, you're still almost a billionaire. <laughs> uh, it's insane. Um, or uh, hoping to get the hot stock pick. Because right, you knew yeah. that guy that yeah. bought Yahoo right. for a dollar, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like, you know, th those were the stories. They, they were the myths. They, they're like the urban myths of the investing world. And people want that. They mm -hmm. want to see that gigantic spike in something. But then, but then they buy a mutual fund. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, this, which is diversified and yeah, I'm, I'm, have that it, it's, back. and and <laughs> we won't even talk about the embedded capital gains that come along with a mutual fund. Uh, <laughs> but in the weeds on that stuff. Yes, that's <laughs> way too far in the weeds. Um, but it it seems like if if someone is serious and you because of your licenses, because of your knowledge, because of your training. You're not going to say, okay, we have this program for you, like a person selling a franchise, okay, which th that's not the case. No. They only know what their franchise costs, what the average person gets as a return for it, and here's how you can finance it. Have a nice day. The first thing we okay. got to decide is who are you? Are you a checkers yeah. player or are you a chess player? Are you a checkers player that wants to go over to, you know, and do more of the chess strategies that I right. call? It's, it's just who are you? Because if you are... A checkers person, we want to make sure you're playing the game very, very well. Exactly. Right? So you exactly. actually can retire yes. with these with these accounts and you know generate decent income from them. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, no, I want to build wealth, generational wealth, even possibly. Well, then you know it's you're gonna to have to do different things, and some and there's gonna be an element of risk. There's risk all the time. 
There's risk in, um, in doing some of these strategies. There's risk in doing nothing. You know, there's risk in putting money yeah. in the bank, right? Which it has FDIC insurance, but you know, inflation obviously is, right. is you know, there's, there's a risk there. So there's risk to everything. Yeah. So it's all about who that person is. So I want, so we like to, dis, to really sit down with somebody like who, who are you, right? And who, what, what is gonna make you happy? You know, what's going to make you successful? And, and that's the difference between someone who is selling a product to make you rich, okay, versus someone who's looking at your life no and saying, let's, let's turn around. Well, if, if, if I'm selling you a McDonald's franchise, mm -hmm. okay, oh, look at this, you'll do this. You, you know what I mean? But, but they're single product focused, mm -hmm. and that's their job. You have this massive array, and you have the knowledge of the markets and everything else and how to leverage it. Freddie, this is fantastic. People need to be able to get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can go to optofinancial.com and contact you there and set an appointment. Thank you very much for coming in today. Thanks for this having has me. just been a fantastic discussion. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good day. All right, take care.